a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, sin must not reign over your mortal bodies so that you obey their desires. And do not present the parts of your bodies to sin as weapons for wickedness, but present yourselves to God as raised from the dead to life and the parts of your bodies to God as weapons for righteousness. For sin is not to have any power over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? Of course not. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that although you were once slaves of sin, you have become obedient from the heart to the pattern of teaching to which you were entrusted. Freed from sin, you have become slaves of righteousness. The word of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Had not the Lord been with us, let Israel say, had not the Lord been with us, when men rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us alive, when their fury was inflamed against us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us, the torrent would have swept over us. Over us, then, would have swept the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who did not leave us a prey to their teeth. We were rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Broken was the snare, and we were freed. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. be with you. And with Proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Jesus said to his disciples, be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. And Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and then begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that, master's servant, that servant's master will come on an unexpected day at an unknown hour 
and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations or act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. As Father Matthew said in his introduction, I am a passionist priest. I have been a passionist religious now for 30 years, a religious for 36 years and a priest for 30 years. And today, in the United States and Canada, we are celebrating the feast day of our founder, St. Paul of the Cross. Now don't confuse him with St. John of the Cross. Those are two different saints. St. Paul of the Cross lived in the 1700s in Italy, and he had a nickname, Hunter of Souls. And I really love that because he preached what was important. He was a hunter. Now, he didn't hunt with a gun, and he didn't hunt with a knife or a bow and arrow. He hunted with words because Paul of the Cross, Paul Daniel was his name. He was a preacher. He preached parish missions all throughout Italy, gave retreats, that's what we passionists do. And he preached especially about the cross. That is why he was called St. Paul of the Cross. During his mission, for example, he would point to a crucifix and he would say, people are looking for miracles. That, pointing to a crucifix, is the miracle of miracles. He would say, the cross is the most overwhelming work of God's love. And then he said, everything, everything is to be found in the cross. Wow, what a preacher. That's why people pack churches to listen to him. And the truth is, Paul preached what mattered. He preached about the cross. He preached about our soul, our soul that will endure and live forever. And he was a hunter of souls. And he was preaching, really, the kerygma, that's a Greek word that means the message of the early church. And what was the message of the early church? That we are forgiven. We are forgiven by the blood of Jesus at the cross. Wow. Paul himself said, my preaching is not an end in itself. It's a means to something else. He said, the reason why I preach is to inspire people, but the reason why I preach is to get people into the confessional. <laughs> he preached so that people would come to Christ in a deeper way. He said, it's in the confessional that lives are changed, that people are touched, that sins are forgiven, that people are transformed. And I know that from my own life. I've been a parish missionary now for 30 years, and on every parish mission that I preach, I always have one evening for reconciliation, and I'll hear anybody's confession, and we usually invite in a bunch of priests because I know, and I've seen this for 30 years, when people come before me, miracles happen. Conversions. Transformation where people are stuck. And God pouring out his mercy and his grace. Some of you who are watching by television, you haven't been to confession in a long time. Some of you maybe who are here, it's been a while. I want to say this. No matter how long it's been, no matter who you are, and no matter what you've done, 
come to Christ. He will forgive you. His blood outpoured on the cross, the forgiveness of our sins. Wow, what a message. Wanted to tell you a little bit more about the Passionists. We are priests, brothers, sisters, laity, and we are in some 64 countries. We are all around the world. We've been in existence now for 300 years. This is our Jubilee year of the Passionists, 300th Jubilee, 64 countries. And we have retreat centers all around our country, the United States. I live at our retreat center in Houston, Texas. But we have retreats in Los Angeles, Sacramento, Detroit, some of the places in the East. We have New York City, Pittsburgh, Scranton, Hartford, Florida. And we have a, a saying, treat yourself to a retreat. People come from all over to our centers, spend a whole weekend with us, Catholics, 12-step people, Protestants, and we invite them to be renewed. Now, people go on retreats not to escape from the world. Rather, they go on retreats to be fortified to face the world. When you're on a retreat, you hear inspiring talks, you spend some time in prayer, you deal with inner issues, and then you go back to the world, strong, fortified, more than a conqueror. I invite you, if you've never made a retreat, to treat yourself to a retreat, as I said, all around the country. Now, Paul wanted our retreats to be schools of prayer. He didn't call his houses, his residences, monasteries. He called them retreats. And as I said, he wanted them to be schools of prayer. Prayer is the foundation of who we are as passionists. We are very apostolic, which means we do ministry, but we're very contemplative. We spend time in prayer being renewed so that we can be fortified to go out and preach, to go out and minister. Wanted to tell you, Paul of the Cross, Paul Daniel was his name. Paul of the Cross lived to be 81 years old. We have many passionate saints like Gemma Galgani. We have Maria Goretti. We have uh, many saints in our community. Gabriel Pacente who died very young, but Paul lived to be 81. He had mystical visions early on in his life, many consolations in prayer, and don't we all love that, when we feel the Holy Spirit and we feel the consolations. And Paul had that, but much like many of the saints, if you ever read St. John of the Cross or if you know anything about Mother Teresa, those consolations were taken away from him the last 30, 40 years of his life. He experienced desolation. But what made Paul a saint, most people, they only pray when they feel good. And when the feelings go, they quit. They'd rather watch TV. But what made Paul a saint is he persevered. He was faithful. He stayed strong even though he didn't feel it. And that's what made him such a great spiritual director because many of his directees were going through desolation. They felt far from God. And he explained to them that we have to be purged. If you know anything about St. John of the Cross, he talks about the purgation and illumination and being into union with God finally. And sometimes God tests us in prayer and wants us to be faithful even though we don't feel it. And I pray for all of you and all of you watching by television that you will have consolation. But in the hard times, you will be faithful and you will persevere and you won't just rely upon your feelings. You'll be strong 
Blessed, Jesus said, are those who believe without seeing. And that was Paul of the Cross, great spiritual director, great mystic, great person of prayer. The word passion, as you know, if you've seen Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion, the word passion means suffering. There is so much suffering in our world today. We are presently in the midst of the pandemic, as you know. Some 700,000 people just in the United States have died. Hospitals are filled with people who are suffering at this very moment. The political situation is in turmoil in many ways. Gas prices are up. The economy, many people are out of work. And as you know, some of us are grieving a spouse or a child that has passed away or a loved one in the hospital. As you grow older, there's physical pain, arthritis, hip pain, your neck, your back. Some are struggling with an addiction. There's emotional struggles like depression and loneliness. People have mental illnesses like phobias and anxiety. And what Paul taught us, and you should know this too as a spiritual person, our sufferings have meaning. They're not just arbitrary. Whatever you're going through is significant. And Paul helped us to understand this, Paul of the cross. The cross brings salvation, but it also brings meaning the passion. I think about my own life and the sufferings that I've been through. Number one, it's, it's deep in me. We have to go beyond the superficial, folks, to the supernatural. It's deep in me. It's brought me closer to God. It's given me compassion, and it's transformed my life. I can, I have, write a book about this. Just that one phrase, deep in me, brought me closer to God, transformed me, given me compassion. That's a book right there. You see, suffering is significant. You can turn your hurts into halos, your scars into stars. My favorite artist, the sculptor Michelangelo, studied over in Rome, and I remember going into St. Peter's Basilica, and there you see the beautiful Pietà. No one has ever sculpted like Michelangelo, David and Moses and so many beautiful works of art. He sculpted them so magnificently and so beautifully that you could even see the veins in the arms of these statues. One time, someone approached Michelangelo and, and they said to him, Michelangelo, you produce such beautiful works. How do you do it? Michelangelo, the great man of faith, said, when I approach that block of stone, I know that God has already put the finished, polished statue in there. It's already done. All I have to do is chip away the pieces. And I love that because what is God doing in our life right now? You have to understand that God, you think Michelangelo was good, God is the master sculptor. And what he's doing is, he's not giving us sufferings. He's using them. God writes straight with our crooked lines. He's using them to chip away the pieces in our life. Pieces like a chip on our shoulder, bad attitude, negativity, excess anger, addictions, sins. You see, our sufferings are significant, folks. They transform us if you'll let them. They can make you bitter, they can make you better. And that's what, that's the legacy of Paul, St. Paul of the Cross. He gave meaning to the experience of life and what we're going through. And don't we all need understanding? With understanding, you can face your trials and be more than a conqueror through Christ. We are celebrating our 300th anniversary, and I want to tell you, don't waste your sufferings. You can see more through a, through a teardrop 
than you can through a telescope. Yes, we're celebrating our 300th jubilee of our founding. And when Paul came before the Pope back in 1720 or that time, 300 years ago, with his proposed rule, it was Pope Benedict the 14th. And he presented the rule to the Pope about wanting to found the Passionist community. This is what the Pope said. He said, Paul, this, the Passionists, should have been the first community in the church. And here it is the last. It was the last at that time. And why the first? Because the cross is the, the core of our Catholic spirituality. At Mass, what we're doing is a dynamic remembering of the passion. I don't know if you know that, but that's what that is. A dynamic remembering that brings the cross right into the moment. Many of you have adopted this spirituality. You pray the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary. That's passionist. You walk the stations of the cross. That's passionist. Or you wear a cross around your neck. You meditate upon a crucifix like St. Francis of Assisi or Paul of the Cross. That's passionist spirituality. I believe the core of our Catholic spirituality. And that's why the Pope said, this should have been the first community. And behold, now 300 years later, we proclaim what really matters, the passion of Jesus, the significance of suffering, and getting a deep relationship with God in prayer. We have a motto as passionists, a saying, a motto, and that's what I want to leave with you as I conclude. May the passion of Jesus Christ be always in our hearts.